What's up guys, Gamer Heretic here coming to you from Star Wars The Old Republic and today we'll be talking about my Assassin tank. Uh, it is the class I have tanked on the most out of all of them and it is by far my favorite one to tank on. I have tanked on the uh, Juggernaut and I have tanked on the Power Tech but the Assassin to me has the best crowd control and the best cooldowns. Um, so the first thing I'm going to tell you is obviously gear is extremely important. Um, you want to make sure that you're putting in shield and absorb along with defense mods to help you not die in combat. Um, the biggest thing though is you want to try to stack uh, shield more so than absorption because you guys have a natural absorb. Um, so you want to get your shield up there, see how I mouse over it and my shield jumps up a huge bit. Um, from I forgot to read the number exactly. So it's uh, my shield chance is at 44.82%. And I pop Dark Ward, it jumps up to 62.82%. You also have a natural buff that every time you hit or get hit, your absorb goes up. So that will pretty much both be floating in the 60s, which is fairly decent. Um, and my defense chance goes up with Dark Ward is active as well. No, it does not. Never mind. Scratch, I said that. Um, Accuracy is basically just natural 11% accuracy, so you can actually hit whatever the hell you're trying to hit. Uh, um, yeah, so the best thing I can tell you to do is for most times when you're tanking, a lot of people will tell you most DPS will just unload. They will literally just open up their hardest hitting abilities, they'll rip the threat, which is what you have to generate to keep stuff pissed off at you, they'll rip that threat right off of you and it'll go straight to them. Um, solo tanking on one target, an assassin, is extremely easy. Uh, you have shock and you have wither, which actually generates a high amount of threat on its own. Um, you get a buff for, to the threat to this generates from your tanking class. Um, so it allows you to do a pretty high amount of threat, so you actually should have no problems maintaining threat as long as you're rotating between these two before you even have to use your taunt. Um, the only time I ever have to use a taunt um, is if, say, a mercenary or a marauder just absolutely unloads on whatever I'm hitting and just peels it right off of me. Pulling that threat, or showing out your taunt, will pull that threat right back off of them and skyrocket it up. Because you basically have a threat meter. So what a threat meter is, is how angry said target is at whoever's hitting it and there's a, a the meter that constantly goes up between DPS and the tank and the healer so what most of the time you do when your tank is you let the tank you you'll hit on it get a little bit of threat built up to get it angry and the DPS is supposed to just absolutely unload and they'll skyrocket their threat and the moment that the DPS is done unloading all of that damage, you throw your taunt out and it will skyrocket your threat way above them. And you should have no problems keeping threat uh, from that boss or said target for the remainder of the fight. Um, it just really depends on how you manage your threat. Um, you do have an AoE taunt, which I strongly suggest you do not use unless like you're doing like multiple enemies, like if you're controlling adds. Um, I'm assuming if you've watched this video, you've probably done some flashpoints where there's a, or some raids, you never know, you just might need some fine-tuned tips, where you have a group of enemies and you need to keep them from attacking said person, you'll fire that out, it taunts everything. It has a longer cooldown than your single target taunt, so please keep in mind, use it sparingly. Um, that's pretty much it as far as like taunting goes. Um, you have three damage mitigation abilities. You have Overcharge Saber, you have Dark Ward, and you have Deflection. Um, Overcharge Saber actually will heal you for a chunk of your health and reduce your damage uh, that you take, uh, actually for quite a bit. Um, Dark Ward obviously increases your shield chance. And then you have Deflection, which actually, if you spec into it as an assassin, see my purple puddly goodness, um, it actually acts as a reflect. Speaking of which, we'll be going over the utilities for an assassin tank. Um, the biggest ones, that, uh, it's really, really the bigger ones are later, but these are the ones that I use for my tanking. Um, obviously reduces the cooldown of Jolt, uh, which is your interrupt, I do believe. Uh, yes, Jolt is your interrupt, you always want to interrupt faster. Uh, Unbreakable Will, which is the movement impairing effect thing, and then for speed, which allows you to run really fast. 
that helps uh, when you're stunned. So if you're a tank and you're stunned, you can take hits and still keep on ticking and not die. Um, targets controlled by Spike or Electrocute take 5% more damage. Uh, the benefit to this is actually, as a tank, you have the ability to use Spike now without being in stealth. So you could just literally stand directly in front of them and use Spike. That increases the damage that they take so the DPS can actually crank out way more damage. 5% more, but every little bit helps. Um, then you have Assassin's Shelter. Um, I use this because it actually uh, reduces the damage that everyone takes. Yeah, Mass Mind Control provides Assassin's Shelter to all allies within range, including yourself. Reducing the damage they take by 5% for the next 6 seconds and healing them for 2319 health over the duration. So use that, like I said, with groups of enemies or if there's just not enough healing going out, it's, it's a free heal that you can help out. Um, then you have, obviously, you have Dark Stability, Activating Deflect, grants 6 seconds of immunity to a whole bunch of nice stuff, including Stun, Sleep, Lift, and Incapacitating Effects. Then you have Insulation. Uh, this actually helps out a lot. Increases your armor rating by 30% with Lightning Charge or Surging Charge. And Depredating Volts increases movement speed by 35% for 6 seconds with Dark Charge. Additionally, when damage breaks your mind trap prematurely, the target will suffer from sapped mind, reducing the damage they deal by 25% for 10 seconds. So when you're using Surging Charge or Discharge, uh, well, technically that ability doesn't exist anymore, the Lightning Charge or Surging Charge, uh, but you have Deprivating uh, Volts, which is nice. Um, it's an uninterruptible move, and it slows uh, the target by 50% and uh, it procs and it's pretty nice to do. Plus it hits, it's probably one of your hardest hitting abilities as a tank. Um, then you have Phantom Stride, oh, or fan, Phasing Phantasm I should say, because uh, it gives Phantom Stride can be used while immobilized and purges movement impairing effects when used. Additionally, Force Speed grants Phasing Phantasm, causing you to absorb 60% of all incoming damage for the duration of Force Speed. That's a nice damage reduction to do. It's mainly more so for PvP, but it can be pretty good in PvE instances. Um, I like it. Uh, and then obviously you have Retaliatory Grip. This is important for all tanks. Deflection grants Retaliatory Grip, reflecting 50% or 100% for the Darkness Discipline of all direct single tech and force damage back to the attacker. Retaliatory Grip lasts for 12 seconds and does not absorb incoming damage. So that's nice to have because you get basically Reflect uh, and you can you still take damage, uh, like direct damage, but like force and tech damage, like a perfect example to use this is when you're doing Karaga's Palace and you want to reflect a fire. Uh, just make sure that the healer is going to heal the shit out of you because after a certain time you're going to absorb, you're going to take that damage and it's going to hurt. Um, but yeah, so the biggest thing that you want to remember as a tank is always try to keep threat. Always make everything angry. Um, force pull is a nice ability. I don't use it very often. Um, it's nice to, like, a uh, perfect example would be Dark, uh, not Dark, Dread Palace, um, when you're doing that and they have the patrols of, like, the three, uh, three patrols, um, you can stun two and then pull the one out of the group so you don't accidentally hit them and then wake it up and then it's just utter chaos. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, tanking for me is not very difficult, um, by any means, uh, but if you do have any questions, as regard to tanking or any tips that you want to offer me to tell me how to tank better, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, leave comments in the below. Obviously, like and subscribe, and I'll have more videos coming out soon. But I appreciate it, guys, and thank you, and have a good one.